Oklahoma. It was a back and forth battle between Keegan Bradley. Well, he see, he saw, and he conquered. Homa tapping it in, merely a formality at the 72nd hole of the tournament. Almost drained a long one to get the job done one putt earlier, but a par at the last was plenty for Homa, who, as I said, four career wins on tour. And this one comes at the very tournament where he saw his first career win back in 2019. Now different venue as this tournament did move um, here in 2022. But Max Homa, two shots clear of a pack of Matthew Fitzpatrick, Cam Young and Keegan Bradley at six under. Keegs did cost himself a couple of bucks there at the 72nd with a bogey at the last uh, as he does bunch up into a group instead of being a solo second. But Max Homa is your winner at the Wells Fargo Championship. All right, let's break it down with the best in the business, our insider on tour. That's Kyle Porter, our lead golf writer. KP, uh, Max Homa getting the job done here once again, and it was truly a fantastic fashion in which he did get it done. It was not given here on Sunday. KP, as you take a look at this known Twitter critic, put it into words. You don't have to keep it to 280 <laughs> characters, but uh, what does this mean for the Angelino? Well, I, I think it's really interesting, uh, Joe, because, you know, I was looking back at a kind of numbers since the start of 2021, and, and Max Homa now has more wins since the start of 2021 than Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, Dustin Johnson, Xander Schauffele. You can keep going on down the list. Max is a uh, – he's an established winner on the PGA Tour now. He's won three times in his last 30 PGA Tour events after only winning once – uh, in his first 110. So, you know, Rory said it after his round today. He said, listen, Max Home is a really good player. And I think sometimes uh, because guys are active on social media or maybe in Max's case, because he hasn't really done it at a major championship yet, uh, we maybe discount their, what they do on the actual PGA Tour sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's what's happened with him a little bit. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's been awesome the last year and a half. And if, if you look at his numbers, we talked about this on the First Cut podcast on Thursday. If you look at his numbers this season, I mean, he's having a, a lights out top 10 in the world type player uh, ball striking season. His his 1.1 strokes gained uh, in the ball striking category so far this season uh, is is extraordinary. I mean, it's it's a top 10, top 15 player type number. So I'm really excited about what's to come for him. I, I think he can start to be competitive at the majors. I think he could play his way onto the President's Cup team. And I think, you know, it, him winning uh, PJ Tour events used to feel like a novelty. Uh, and now it feels a little bit like a foregone conclusion. You don't know what events he's going to win, but uh, winning for Max Homa has gotten uh, pretty normalized, which is the best place to be on the PGA Tour. Yeah, the game is definitely trending. The mental side of it uh, coming into form as well, KP. As you said, third win since the start of 2021. Uh, four wins now since 2019. And you outline uh, those who don't have four wins in that span. But as you take a look at Homa, this is technically a second win this season with the first one coming back in Napa. Sometimes hard to know when a season begins and ends here out on the tour. <laughs> but KP, where have you seen him grow the most? Either on course, some of the things you've seen, or even off course, uh, that comfortability with winning that sometimes dictates success on tour. Yeah, I think it's two things, Joe. I think one is the ball striking that I mentioned earlier. You know, he, he had been progressing. the trajectory. His trajectory as a ball striker has been good, has, has been good for the last eight years. Uh, but he's really made a leap this year. It, it, it's different to go from gaining a half stroke around on guys uh, in, in ball striking to gaining a full stroke, stroke or more. That's a different category of player. And then the second thing, and this is something that he's talked about pretty openly over the last couple of years, is not, and we saw this on Sunday, is, is, is when you hit a bad shot, that doesn't mean you're out of the tournament. That doesn't mean you're out of the round. That doesn't mean you're out of the hole. Everybody on the PGA Tour hits bad shots. We saw Max Homa miss, uh, I think, four out of five greens in regulation on the second nine today and save himself with putt after putt after putt. And he really mentally stayed in it, saved himself with putter, and gave himself an opportunity to close it out at the end. And I, I don't know that that's something that Max Homa – in 2018, 2017, 2016 would have been capable of doing. Uh, well, we do have to talk about someone that gets plenty of airtime here on HQ, but Rory McIlroy, again, putting together a nice Sunday. Wasn't the win that Homa obviously saw here, but four shots back, he finishes. That doesn't tell the whole story. Made the cut on the number this week and then surges on the weekend, KP. What can you say about Rory's form right now? Because, you know, it's a solo second at Augusta, takes a nice little break, shows up here, another top 10. We will see him next at Southern Hills for the PGA. Already two Wanamakers in that trophy case. Have these last two starts affected your expectations for Rory at the second major of the season? 
I think they actually have a little bit, and, and that's not something I normally say about stars uh, over that short a period of time, but it was a really interesting article that came out earlier this week by Justin Ray, uh, the stats guru, Justin Ray, who, and he was talking about how bad Rory has been from 50 to 125 yards on the PGA Tour this year. He, he's averaging like 24 feet in terms of proximity to the hole. Uh, the PGA Tour average is 19, and that's just not a good number for him. Well, this week, Rory was 17 uh, in, in terms of proximity to the hole from 50 to 125 yards. He was two under playing from that distance. He had uh, about seven shots uh, from 50 to 125 yards. So, And Rory even said afterwards, he's like, listen, my approach game feels better than it has uh, re recently or in, in past years. I, I think he's striking the ball uh, quite well, actually, going into the PGA. It's interesting, if you look back, he won this event last year. That was his last start before the PGA at Kiowa. But he actually struck the ball better this year, Joe, than he did last year in terms of off the tee and with his iron play. So he had a bad round on Friday, almost missed the cut. That kind of took him out of, uh, barring a miracle, the ability to win this golf tournament. Mm -hmm. But I was actually encouraged by how he played over the weekend and how he's striking the ball right now, especially over his last two tournaments going into a, a big time major championship in Tulsa. He will have to keep that short iron or, or the iron play from shorter distances in check, though. That's going to be uh, a big time factor for him. And, and to not have that blow up round like we've seen so many times at majors in the past. You're going to pull a lot of those types of numbers when you're putting it out there 330 with ease. We'll see what <laughs> Roars can do in a couple weeks, but it is time now for the perfect fit presented by Bonobos. Looking forward to next week as we turn our attention to TPC Craig Ranch for the Byron Nelson KP, who matches the ask of what's required in McKinney, Texas. Well, I, I think what's really interesting about this tournament, uh, Joe's, is uh, Scotty Scheffler and Jordan Spieth making their first appearances uh, since they since they won. You know, Scheffler obviously played in the team event at the Zurich, but it's his first individual appearance since he won the Masters. Spieth, his first individual appearance uh, since he won the RBC Heritage. And you're going to get crowds at TPC Craig Ranch about 20 miles up the road from me. They're just massive uh, cheering for these two guys. I'm excited to see them both uh, at the Byron Nelson in the past. You know, Spieth was shouldering a lot of that load of the kind of the hometown favorite. But now Scheffler uh, living in Dallas is going to be involved in that as well. And I'm excited to see uh, what what's in store for both of those guys in this field as, as probably the two biggest names before heading to the PGA the next week. Next week's going to be all about the kids from Texas, but this one was about the kid from Cali. Max Homa, one up on us all on Mother's Day. KP, we thank you. And for more, you can always get it on the First Cut Podcast. Our guys taking you under the ropes and into the action each and every week on tour. Download, subscribe, and enjoy the First Cut Podcast. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.